Welcome to Monday. Now, yes, I'm talking about Game of Thrones, kind of. I am not talking about last night's episode of Game of Thrones because people in the UK and people getting it on on-demand services have not necessarily had a chance to watch it yet. So I'm not going to do that. I don't care enough to really do the hot takes that way. What I'm fascinated by in this whole thing, both because of schadenfreude and uh, just because it's fascinating to watch society behave in illogical ways, is the outrage about things. That people are very inconsistent regarding media. They'll go from, why do you care? So you're just overthinking it. It's just a show. It's just a video game. It's just a movie. But then when it's something they really care about, oh my God, it's the end of the world because something didn't fit their head canon. And so I did a cheeky thing over the weekend. Oh, I should get the shilling out of the way. Um, no, I'll hold this because there's a reason for that. Um, I did a, a cheeky thing and not terribly nice thing over the weekend. I'm fully admitting to saying something in a way to test people's responses, which is not a morally wrong thing to do. It is, this is when uh, kindness and fairness don't connect. Sometimes doing the fair thing is not the kind thing and vice versa. Um, and I'll choose fairness over kindness three times out of four. Um, before I get to that, I want to say that I'm going to try to keep this video short because short videos get more traffic, but it may go long because this is kind of complex. Um, so if you want longer form videos, even though the traffic t does take a hit, when it's closer to 30 minutes than 10. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Butchered that. Um, but here's here's the tweet I put up. Uh, it was yesterday. Yesterday morning. So, uh, whoops. What's going on? Um, here. Whoop. Oh, that's not good. Okay, here we go. Daenerys Targaryen wipes out most of his city after it surrenders and chattering classes freak out. Iron Man wipes out an entire army whose general has been defeated without giving them a chance to surrender, then is given a hero's funeral, and all good. Gee, I wonder why. Now, the reason I said this wasn't a terribly nice thing to do is because I knew people were going to jump to conclusions about the gee, I wonder why part. They were going to focus on my identity and assume I was just talking about Oh, it's because she's a woman. Um, instead of it being more nuanced and more about a, an, um, an art critic perspective than social theory. Now, people who have been watching my stuff for long enough know I come at this stuff as an artist, as an art critic. Not so much social theory because I prefer to take things um, in the terms that they set, as long as something is consistent. I don't have to agree with the morality of a world as long as it's consistent and I can follow it. It's the role player in me. I don't do the problematic media take. It's all about execution. And this was exactly what people misunderstood about my last Game of Thrones video that people got so mad about. And the Mortal Kombat video that people got so mad about. It is, it is continuing a point in philosophy that is essentially individual, individualism versus collectivism. What entity is the one that truly matters? And I say the entity that truly matters is an individual. The minute we start thinking of a collection of individuals as a collective, and that collective is the entity that truly matters, then we're in trouble. That's when totalitarian rulers, when fascist rulers can come in and get their hooks into you. That's why I'm very anti-Marxist. That's why I'm concerned a lot of, of a lot of the collectivist sentiment floating around in the world. And the truth about why it's different. Um, 
And it's, I'm not saying it's a direct apples to apples comparison. Again, I never said that. It was the um, real disparity in complete freak out on one hand and all good don't question at all at the other. There, there was no happy medium gray area in in the bulk of responses on both sides. And people leapt to a ton of conclusions and ended up looking very foolish in my eyes accordingly. And that's why I'm saying that it was fair but not kind because I gave people, I opened the door for people to act foolishly knowing a lot of people were going to um, and they did not disappoint. Um, the, the, there were some people, you see the first comment, um, someone said, uh, I'm not complaining about the heel turn for Daenerys as people are calling it. Um, they just didn't like the execution. And you know what? That's fair. That's fair. Um, the pacing of Game of Thrones, the difference between season one and season, um, eight radically different i know this because i used to watch game of thrones when i was doing other things um caught up on a lot of it stuffing lady bits envelopes because it was talking 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 everybody explained what they were doing it was more like a radio drama i didn't have to watch the screen this whole season i have actually had to watch because there's far less dialogue a lot more just massive battles um it is a different show. It has become different. Um, a lot of premium cable shows do that. Breaking Bad is another one that was ponderous for its middle seasons. And then uh, season the final season was just breakneck pace. So um, there's nothing wrong with breakneck pace. I mean, the style of writing where you don't know very much about a character's inner motivations you 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 infer it from their actions uh and it's very action driven that that's that's pulp novels and I, I love pulp style writing so i don't mind the rapid pacing but i do acknowledge it's a change i disagree with the people who insist that oh it's an army versus innocent people um it's totally different that i philosophically have an issue with I despise the disposable soldier paradigm. Soldiers are human beings. The reason we treat soldiers as heroes is because they are sacrificing. We should not treat soldiers as if they are having their humanity completely removed just because they are soldiers one way or another. They are not instantly good people because they're soldiers, a lot of soldiers are pieces of garbage, um, but they're not a cog in a machine either. They're a human being with a family, with, you know, a future if they survive. And the fact that they are willing to potentially give up that future and get killed and or maimed to protect us, which is the paradigm of the military that we have been, um, taught to believe that they are protectors not invaders this is why we have the attitude toward our military that we do and i have to fight down my own getting emotional and stupid when people start doing the they knew what they signed up for thing with soldiers no i've seen too many really strong really brave people totally messed up from war um, war messes you up. War is a horrible thing. And I have given Game of Credit, Grain of Thrones credit from the beginning. Um, even though I find it sickening to watch on a personal level, a major complaint, um, that I have with a lot of media is that it doesn't actually treat violence as violence. It treats, teaches, treats violence as this amazing, awesome thing as opposed to a necessary evil to be avoided when possible. And I really give it to Game of Thrones um, for making violence ugly and sickening and horrifying and like actual violence instead of professional wrestling. Not that 
I I like my professional wrestling. I just like it better now that everybody knows it's not real. Or it's scripted. You know, they're not really beating each other up. It's pantomiming. I prefer that because it makes a clear distinction between real violence, which is ugly, and this professional wrestling that we watch on TV all the time. It's important to keep that straight. Because war is horrible. And unfortunately, I think it's, it's not unfortunate that it's been a really long time since the last global conflict. But it has led to something of a loss of empathy in people because people who have survived a war, people who have been civilians in a place that is under siege, they have a very different approach to this stuff. And um, so I want to get it out of the way, right? This idea that soldiers are disposable, you will get nowhere with me that way. Someone signing up to serve does not mean they're signing up to commit atrocities and it does not mean they're just handing away their humanity, that they're just disposable to do what some actual important people decides they should do. No, that's BS. Other people were like, they're just slavering monsters, Thanos' army. It doesn't matter. Well, unfortunately, Captain Marvel, the Captain Marvel movie, wrecked that. Because the scroll used to be the Marvel alien race nobody felt bad for, but Captain Marvel humanized them. So now those slavering alien races um, are, are individuals with families. And even in their own universe now, we have that. They're not slavering monsters. The, the Kree depicted the Skrull as just monsters, as invaders, Captain Marvel decided they weren't. I think that's a terrible decision based on what happened in the actual Marvel comics. The Skrull are bad, but they've already established that in their movie universe. So we can't say they're just slavering monsters who don't really feel pain and don't really have families and they're not individuals and we don't have to care about them. They're not like us. They're a lesser life form than us. It's no different than stepping on a bug. There's a reason that a lot of monsters like that end up looking kind of like bugs um, in, in media. So we're back down to why is it okay? Why did we all cheer? I went, hey, they went, wait a minute. Um, why, did, why did we all cheer for Tony Stark? But so many people got so upset about Daenerys. And we can talk about characterization. We can talk about that annoying Doctor Strange plot device. If there was only one way, there was only one way. There was only one way that he could see. And Doctor Strange is a narcissist that's going to limit his uh, divination um, uh, powers. He is not the ancient one. You know, nobody's as cool as Tilda Swinton. Um, but, uh, you know, it was nice to see her back because Dr. Strange ain't there yet. And treating Dr. Strange as omnipotent, I'm sorry, that's just scary. So I don't buy that. It's fine if you do. I think it was the intended canon, but uh, I, I, that, that doesn't do it for me. There's more going on here. And what's going on is that individualism versus collectivism. We didn't get to know Thanos' army. We didn't see it from their point of view. We didn't see whether, how they ended up in that army and, and what their families were like and who they cared about. They weren't people to us. Whereas the people of King's Landing were people to the viewer through Tyrion and Jon and Arya's perspectives um, in a way that Thanos' army wasn't. That's the difference. That's the G. I wonder why. We were actually made actively to feel bad by the media, but like by the the work. Um, I can't say TV show or movie because we're comparing a TV show to a movie. But we were trained to care about the people of King's Landing. And I'm questioning that in myself thinking about some of the things they watch executions and 
prop up despots. I, I'm starting to more and more come along to um, Daenerys' thinking on things and nothing good ever goes down when Arya goes to King's Landing. Um, but uh, we know them. They are us in the viewer's mind. In Avengers Endgame, they're not. They're, they're a foreign horde, which is exactly how Daenerys saw the people of King's Landing. Daenerys fulfilled the Dothraki prophecy that Drogo promised his people if they crossed the sea for him. She, at the end of the day, is a Dothraki. She is a foreign invader. She is not, she is no longer a native of Westeros. Um, at least not a native of King's Landing. Those are not her people. She feels no responsibility for them. And that's the real thing a lot of people miss, that Daenerys actually isn't the person ultimately responsible for the well-being of those people. Um, Cersei was. And Daenerys has never been a particularly good guest. I mean, all along the way, her dragons just stole people's livestock and ate like crazy. And she didn't terribly care if, if the locals went without food as long as her dragons ate in group out group again. Um, you know, she killed people just for refusing to bow to her or take the knee, as they call it. Um, you know, Samuel Tarley's... Um, father was a bastard but his brother really wasn't that bad and she just killed him for not joining her not joining her Thanos army um and so Game of Thrones made this standoff actively morally ambivalent because of point of view and because of what you know that we saw the consequences of wiping out thousands of people um, in a way we didn't in, in Endgame. And I actually think if I'm going to watch something about war, I want the Game of Thrones version. I don't want the literally Disneyfied. oh, wow, he just killed millions of, millions of sentient living beings. Yay! No, not yay. No, not yay. If it's a necessary evil, fine, but... He didn't even give him a chance to surrender. He didn't think to take out just Thanos. He had to take everybody out. And it doesn't actually wash that he knew that was the only thing that would work, as some people said online, the, the Doctor Strange ghost in the machine theory. Um, Doctor Strange told him, now's the time to do your thing. But he flat out said, I'm not going to tell you what to do because you won't do it. So Iron Man chose to kill millions instead of the one. He chose that. Totally in character, but it's not a heroic thing to do. It's not. It's not. The heroic thing to do would be to take out Thanos and then give them a chance. Because Thanos is killable without the Infinity Gauntlet, and the Infinity Gauntlet is nothing without the, the stones. Iron Man had all the stones. Thanos was vulnerable. They, they could have taken him out with, you know, Captain Marvel and Thor and, and all that stuff. They, they could have taken care and then gave the army a chance. Iron Man didn't give them that. That's not a heroic move. Captain America would never have done in that moment what Iron Man did. And the whole thing was just too pat for me. That nobody, not, not Captain Marvel, not Captain America, nobody had issues with the choice Tony Stark made. Not like people have issues with Daenerys. But Game of Thrones encourages us to question the decisions of leaders in a way that the Marvel movie universe doesn't. And I would argue as rushed and as hasty and as uneven um, as the last few seasons of Game of Thrones have been, at least we can give it that. At least there's an element of responsibility in that depiction. Because really, I still think the person most responsible for what happened to the people of King's Landing was Cersei. Um, the reason I think Daenerys did not accept the surrender is it didn't come directly from Cersei. Um, I can't know. That's just my guess. But if Cersei had surrendered, if Cersei had surrendered when Daenerys gave her the opportunity instead of killing Daenerys' friend, King's Landing would have been saved. 
One could argue that the minute Cersei did that, she doomed her own people, and her people are her responsibility, not Daenerys's. So why are we getting mad at Daenerys? Well, that gets into some other stuff that I really don't have time to get into right now. But interesting, yeah? Interesting how people saw what they wanted to see, um, didn't put nuance in, didn't actually think things through in the same way. Um, sacking of cities was very common in the medieval period. Precisely because rulers didn't believe that that the natives of a place would ever truly bow to a foreign ruler, to a foreign invader. So if you let them live in large numbers, you were just asking for trouble down the line. Um, nationalism was a real big thing back then. So uh, hope this made you think. Hope this isn't just giving people more reason to freak out. I enjoy Game of Thrones salt a lot, possibly too much, but at least I'm willing to admit that that's not a good and virtuous thing to do. I'm enjoying other people's discomfort. That's bad. That's schadenfreude. But nobody's perfect and we need to allow ourselves these little moments of this isn't very nice, but oh man, is it fun? So we don't do the big ones. We don't become so blind to... This really isn't justifiable. This really isn't okay. This isn't the most morally pure thing. Because if we start completely excusing ourselves, oh no, it's okay when we do it. It's amazing how quickly we end up doing things that should obviously be immoral and aren't because we've just so blinded ourselves one thread at a time. All right. Help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. If you like content like this that makes people think and therefore drives them insane, please become a backer. We do a lot of cool things on the community and thanks for watching.